If you want to get successful in America, what you do is you get political patrons like the Clintons. And, of course, this all came home to roost yesterday, uh, this report that was up on the Drudge Report uh, from Breitbart showing Bill Clinton saying he's going to rebuild Detroit using Syrian refugees. And when I looked at that picture. Uh, I looked at this guy on the right who kind of looked like... Uh, uh, it looked like a profile of Groucho Marx from this particular picture. Guy doesn't look like it that much in other pictures. Talking to Clinton at the Clinton Global Initiative. And he was somebody that I didn't know. And I thought, who is this guy that is pushing so hard for refugee resettlement here in the United States? And why is he pushing that hard? There you can see the picture of him right there. Uh, why is he pushing that hard? And as I started looking at it, I realized this is a story of unbelievable takeover of our country. It's not just. Refugees coming in and taking uh, blue-class factory jobs or middle-class jobs with H-1B visas. No, they're coming in and they're taking over our entrepreneurship. They're taking over American businesses. They're taking that role and shutting us down using their connections in Washington. This guy's company, Chobani Yogurt, is a good example of this. And when you look at the small town, Twin Falls, Idaho, which, as you may not have connected the dots was the place that we heard of back in June where you had that five-year-old girl who was raped by a group of juvenile uh, refugees in that city. It was covered up by the media. It was covered up by the local government. And you say, why were they doing that? Eventually, the truth did come out. And yet, the reason for that is because you've got this guy coming in and putting in the world's largest yogurt factory in a very small town. And you've got massive applications of money going in to buy up the media there. Now, we're going to talk at the bottom of the hour to Lee Stranahan, who's been doing a series of investigative reports in Twin Falls, Idaho. He's going to give us eyewitness reports about what's been going on there. Of course, there's been a, a series of reports that have been ongoing. But one of the things that you have to understand, we talked about this on the nightly news last night in a uh, YouTube video that's up on Alex's uh, channel, Revealed. Foreign Fed member behind refugee push. This guy, who remains a Turkish citizen, actually sits on the board of the New York Fed. And, of course, the New York Fed is the preeminent uh, Federal Reserve Bank organization. There's 12 of them throughout the country. But they're the ones who have the preeminent position, the first among equals. They're the ones who make the calls. This guy, who started out with a massive influx of money from the Small Business Association, $800,000. Hey, you know what? <laughs> my, I started a business with my wife. My father and both of my grandfathers had businesses. They never got a cent, never a cent from the federal government to start their businesses or to expand their businesses. Politically, pe politically connected people like this foreign billionaire, Hamdi Yulukaya, are able to come in and get nearly a million dollars to start their business. And then what did he do? He went out and he bought both New York senators and a large lobbying firm in Washington to get himself into the Michelle Obama school lunch program, where after a couple of years of liberally applied grease in the form of currency, he was able to get the school lunch program to say, hey, we're going to get rid of meat and we're going to start substituting his yogurt in the school lunch program. Isn't that nice? Isn't that nice? Welcome back to the Alex Jones Show. I'm David Knight, and joining me in this segment is going to be Breitbart Journalist. He's actually the lead investigative reporter at Breitbart News. He's the founder of CitizenJournalistSchool.com, Lee Stranahan. And he's had a series of articles about what's going on in Twin Falls, Idaho. You say, well, why Twin Falls, Idaho? It's a very small town. It's got less than 50,000 people. Going back to August 10th, he had this uh, story, Twin Falls Refugee Rape special report. Why are the refugees moving in in the first place? He said, two recent sexual assaults by Muslims in this community of about 50,000 people have made national headlines and raised a wider question. Why are the refugees in Twin Falls there in the first place? Well, the answer to that is Chobani Yogurt, the world's largest yogurt factory and the man behind it. And his story is an amazing story of how you can Get ahead in the world today if you are a friend of the Clintons, if you uh, buy influence with them. But, you know, as, as we look at this, and again, there was a lot of pushback when this story was originally reported of the first rape of the little girl, five-year-old girl who was raped by uh, three other juveniles reportedly. 
And there was a lot of pushback. There was pushback in the mainstream media. There was pushback in the local media. There was pushback in the local government. We've got Slate calling the Drudge Report and InfoWars out. They said the Drudge Report trumpeted the InfoWars story with the headline, Syrian refugees rape little girl at knife point in Idaho. They say, oh, this is just a bunch of unsubstantiated rumors. I had the mayor there attack the family on Facebook. Well, the truth will eventually come out. And one of the people who has been at the very epicenter of this, again, is lead investigative reporter for Breitbart News, Lee Stranahan. He's joining us on the line right now. Thank you for joining us, Lee. Yeah, David, thanks very much for having me. Give us an idea of why, you asked the question, why are the refugees and Twin Falls there in the first place? And you answer that in your story. Tell us why they're there in the first place. Well, the short answer is cheap labor and local oligarchy. Let's, let's be clear on what's going on here. Yes. And, and. Also, let's be clear that what's going on in Twin Falls is not unique to Twin Falls. This is really what's going on across the country and, and around the world, uh, but it's going on across the country in the United States. What's interesting about Twin Falls is that I think it provides a real microcosm of the problem. This provides a real microcosm of the problem with globalism yes. and the impact that it has in areas from law and order to public health to jobs and wages, right, um, across the country. And so I've been embedded up here in Twin Falls for about a month now. I'm going to be up here another couple of weeks. And, um, and really because I think it hits on so many important issues. And often when we talk about these things on a national or international level, I think it's uh, in a sense too abstract for people. I mean, Pete, you, you can get it, right? Yeah. But when you see it at a ground level, the way things are, are working, in a, in a town that is, you know, like you say, about 50,000 people, um, it, it, it really comes into very, very sharp focus what we're up against here with this combination of big institutions, business, government, um, media, and even religion, um, working on a local level the same thing that we're seeing on a global level. So that's, that's one of the things that's interesting. And they have a great activist community up here. One of the things about Twin Falls is they're actually doing something about it. People like my friend Julie DeWolf is up here. Uh, that, and there's a group up here called We the People that have been really at the forefront and keeping this story alive. The, the sexual assault, the rape happened back on June 2nd Yes, and was buried. And I didn't even gain. I was covering the political conventions and... Uh, so I didn't get to it till the beginning of August, and other people were doing a great job. The activist up here, but you know, you know, a number of other writers, you guys uh, were on it, and um, the you know the thing I've been uh, really uh, blessed to be able to do is to spend the time to do a deep dive in it and really start to look into the issues. And boy, I'll tell you, one thing that's very clear is the citizens of Twin Falls, the regular people, not the activists, just people living their lives. They realize that they're being starved for information. They realize that the local media is the fix is in with that local media. So and let's talk about that. that that's yeah. a massive influx of capital from Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway. Yep. Eleven million dollars into this tiny town in order to buy the media, essentially. So I think it's one of the reasons, I, I, you know, I'm a conspiracy theorist, of course, but, you know, when you have that kind of uh, influence there, you can suppress these stories. And they did that with the rape of that little five-year-old girl. And then, as you pointed out in your series of stories, because we've had the second rape happen in August, and that was the rape uh, by a refugee who had been profiled as one of yeah. the shining examples of upstanding citizens that are being brought in, and he was profiled by this very same media and then he turns around and allegedly rapes a 33 year old uh, mentally retarded lady yeah he, he molested her he molested mm -hmm. her he didn't he was planning to rape her he said. okay okay but, yeah but she fled and so and that's an interesting part of the story but i think it's also as we look at this other story what, what surfaced uh, yesterday with breitbart in detroit You've got Bill Clinton with the Clinton Foundation, the Clinton Global Initiative, and this guy who owns the yogurt factory there, that massive presence there, $450 million to start it, the world's largest yogurt factory. He's now expanding it with another $100 million, so this thing continues to grow. And he's bragging about how he's got 30% of his employees there are refugees. They speak 11 different languages. I told my wife, I said, you know, he says, I've got translators for these 11 different languages there 24-7. And I said, 
it would be a lot cheaper, wouldn't it, just to teach them English? But he wants these people to be captive to him, doesn't he? That's By right. keeping or them to hire Americans. That's another wacky idea that I'd have. Yeah. But um, <laughs> maybe I don't know. Maybe maybe like the veterans I've interviewed who applied and couldn't get a job there. Oh um, wow! Yeah. And if you think, let's think about that irony for just one second. We we have these uh, global interests who start wars. Uh, like the war in Iraq, let's say. Let's use that as an example, okay? Mm -hmm. A war that was supported by both Bush and Clinton. Not to be a conspiracy theorist, but that's just a fact, right? That's right. Um, then they, the war creates a situation where you have refugees. Does that make sense? So they've started a war, mm -hmm. ruined the country. Mm -hmm. Now people want to flee the country. Then those people come to this country and take jobs that veterans of that war can't get yeah <laughs> think, think about that and you're yeah. exactly right the reason it's not just wages because because the obvious thing is people go well they can pay them less or whatever and that's you know true to some extent they can you know they're they're not as likely to you know rise to the ranks and you know want m more pay they need to work um, but the other big issue is control and the, the, there's also the issue that there's financial incentives there's a, a pamphlet that the local refugee center put out and they tell you I, I did a story on it it's really amazing it was a really easy story to write david i just did copy and paste from the brochure <laughs> and 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 the brochure was literally saying things like um you know if someone's from Af, you know afghanistan be careful not to ask about their wife because they might seek revenge that was oh. the kind of thing they were saying in there <laughs> <laughs> and they're telling employers, you know, don't look if a, if a person's from Eritrea, don't look them in the eye because they won't like that or don't, you know, all these things. And, and you'd think it would be easier just to say, hi, you're in America now. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. People, people are going to ask about your wife and look at you and some people won't look at you and some people won't ask about your wife and just chill. This is America. That's, that's life. Get used to it. But and instead, they have to tell the employers how to get used to it. And, you know, you mentioned the media here, the local newspaper, um, I got more interested in them when they did an editorial attacking Breitbart and me. As you may have noticed, Breitbart uh, has come under some attacks for some yeah. reason the past couple of weeks. <laughs> exactly. Ever since Steve Bannon took over the uh, Trump campaign, he'll, you know, Hillary Clinton's talked about us, and she loves you guys as well. So <laughs> It's a badge of honor, isn't family. it? It's a badge of honor, isn't it? It sure is, yeah. yeah. But um, but the, the local newspaper did an editorial that attacked me by name and attacked Breitbart. They said, well, I'm not a journalist, and I'm, you know, because <laughs> I'm an activist. And I don't see any contradiction between being a—if I'm, 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 they want to label me that way, great. I'm an activist who's done better journalism than the local paper. Let me put it that way. You know, I'm Steve, not, I— I'm not a journalist. Uh, if they want to call me that, that's fine. You know, Lee, I, I think that we got to get rid of this idea that these the mainstream media is perfectly objective. That is their main tool of deception, to say that they don't have an opinion. I would rather, and I have always gotten my news from people who are upfront about the fact that they have a point of view, and that they have an opinion. If they don't understand what their bias is, then they're either ignorant or they're lying to you. Everybody has biases. Even in the stories that you choose to, support, to report, uh, that is an indication of what you're interested in or what your bias is or what your point of view you is so no, i think that's, that whole that's idea exactly right. I, yeah. can, I can watch rachel, rachel maddow mm -hmm. and i know where she comes from so i can use that filter or whatever and she does a lot of very factual she lays out facts a lot of the time and i can i can right. go okay well she's saying this uh you know alex is saying that or whatever and i can just compare and figure things out on my own and i think most people can what we learned about the local media is that they're owned by a company that was financed by Warren Buffett, head of Berkshire Hathaway, who's out on the stump for Hillary Clinton, right? We know that mm -hmm. Warren Buffett is out on the stump promoting Hillary Clinton. And the other thing that's very interesting around town is Berkshire Hathaway Realty is a major player here in town. You see them doing commercial real estate and local real estate. So this little economic boom that's been created by, by the globalist here gee, Warren Buffett's kind of making some money off of that, you see? Yeah. And so the reason they're attacking me uh, and Breitbart and, and you guys and, and anybody else reporting on this is real simple. We're bad for business, right? That's what mm -hmm. it is. They're concerned that us raising these issues or the local activists raising these issues is bad for business. Now, 
it's bad for their business, maybe, right? Because you got to remember, when the factory was put up, it's the world's largest yogurt factory here. It was put up with tens of millions of dollars, about $54 million in government incentives. So it wasn't like they just built it on their own. Exactly. This is like the Olympics where cities compete, right? They, they want the business. And so the city council here bent over backwards or uh, possibly a better analogy is they bent over forwards. Yeah. <laughs> or um, bent over the taxpayer forward. Exactly yeah. right. And, yeah. and again, you know, it's the kind of thing we see all the time where big businesses, and I don't care whether it's Walmart, which is very American, they get all these incentives. And I'll tell you what happens. One of the things, the, this, this story in Twin Falls, a lot of it is about unintended consequences. Um, so that, that girl got raped because they brought in refugees as cheap labor, which happened because they had economically wanted to get this yogurt factory here. And the guy who runs the yogurt factory is a major booster of the refugee program. And when I say booster, I mean working with the Clintons, working with Chuck Schumer, and working with Republicans like the Republican governor here, Butch Otter. Yes, and going to Davos and telling, uh, going getting Davos, commitments. Yeah, yeah well, he's, he set up a tent foundation yep. uh, to bring in refugees, saying they're the best. And that's what he was doing with Bill Clinton when they were talking about Detroit. They said, hey, we got all these empty homes. We can give them to the refugees. Well, and, and they're great employees. Later, today or tomorrow on Breitbart that goes into more detail um, about some of this stuff. Hamdi Yulakai, who is not, let me, I just want to make this clear, he's not a U.S. citizen. That's okay, right. That's fine, but let's be clear. And yet he's on the New York uh, Fed board. I, how board does that happen? Fed, yeah. Which I'm sure that doesn't, anyone who listens to the InfoWars, that doesn't mean anything. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, and he's working with John Podesta's group, with the Center for American Progress, quoting, doing a report that quotes the IMF, the International Monetary Fund. Again, that won't mean anything to listeners of InfoWars. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm saying that facetiously, but here's the thing. The people who listen to you guys, the people who listen to Breitbart, they know who the I The people who read Breitbart, they know who the IMF is. They know what the Fed is and what that means. Mm -hmm. Most people are busy with their lives and kids and jobs, right? Yep. So they don't know. If I say, well, they did a report with Podesta and the IMF, they don't understand the implication of that. The implication is... These guys all work together. This is a group of people, guys and gals. Let's throw Hillary in there. Um, uh, they all work together, right? And they're all jetting off to Davos and doing Huffington Post editorials and, and everything else, working together. Meantime, like I say, you end up with this situation where I, I really, we really wanted to do in Twin Falls was look into the causation and then the ripple effect that this has had throughout the city. And then show how that's worked in other places. Now, Hamdi Yulikai is not a not a U.S. citizen. In 2000, let me let me back up one second. So he became friends with Chuck Schumer because he's got a another factory in New York. That's where Chuck his first Schumer, factory was. Yeah. Chuck Schumer urged him to uh, be part of the federal school lunch program. And I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid getting details on that right now because I don't want to be confusing. But so Chuck Schumer buddies up to Hamdi Yulikaya and vice versa, because it's good for Hamdi's business, and it's good for Chuck's political career now and, and for the constituents in New York. So what they do is, in 2013, when Chuck Schumer was part of the Gang of Eight pushing for open borders, guess who becomes a special guest and visits with President Obama in the White House to promote comprehensive immigration reform? That would be Hamdi, Hamdi. Yulikaya. Yeah. So think about that. We have a non-U.S. citizen, which is, again, that's fine, but pushing for immigration reform in America when it's an issue that he clearly, he's, he's not a citizen, yeah. pushing for that. I, I would not expect to go to Australia and push for more immigration to Australia because I'm not Australian. Does it's just it's just mind-boggling. Yeah, exactly. How how does he have the authority to go in and tell us that how many people we should bring into our country that aren't Americans? He's not even an American, and he's sitting on the Fed board where they're making economic policy. I mean, the and, the New York Fed is is the center of the Fed, that, and this guy is there, and he's a Turkish citizen. And we and we have a story coming at Breitbart. My my, my colleague Michael Patrick Lay, he's been great on this. Now think about this. We contacted. Chobani and asked them, 
simple question. We're just confirming that he's a is he a U.S. citizen or not? Forbes reported, and and I linked to it. Forbes reported he's not a U.S. citizen. Their response. Now you'd think that's an easy question, right? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> I bet, I bet no they don't want any comment. Heard. Yeah, but he brags on his tent foundation that he is a member of the Federal Reserve Board of New York. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, he brags and about like that. I say, the, so what ha here's what happens. The White House needs these dog and pony shows. You know, immigrants, businessmen, successful entrepreneurs also support comprehensive immigration reform. So he's out there. You can look this up. It's on C-SPAN. He makes a statement. Steve Case from AOL makes a statement. These other guys... And they come out. So the you. So what's in it for the government is the, their little puppets in the dog and pony show. Oh look, Hamdi Ulukai is a successful immigrant. He's a successful entrepreneur. Now that what they don't tell you is that part of his success is that Chuck Schumer. He goes to the White House. He makes the statement. Two weeks later, the White House comes out and says, "Guess what? We'd like Greek yogurt, not any yogurt, Greek yogurt, which is what Chobani yogurt is." Yeah to become part of the federal school lunch program. And he basically owns the Greek yogurt segment. He's got more than 50%. Stay with us. We'll be right back with Lee Stranahan, Breitbart lead investigative reporter at... Uh We're selling a product, DNA Force, that is the very best nutraceutical that we can produce. Dr. Group, you took years for you to develop DNA Force for us. It's been something that I've been working on for a long time, Alex, because I think it's very, very important. What the aging process is, is when the cell replicates, we lose a little bit of our telomeres. Telomeres are the little cups on the end of our chromosomes. And when it runs out, you start dying. We chose the PQQ because it has over 175 different clinical trials. It's one of the most effective substances in the world. It works like an antioxidant. It works to repair nerve growth factor. It's so this is a formula to deliver the maximum amount. It's in powder form. We have so many five-star reviews. I take this. This is this is the product that I take. Infowarslife.com and the profit we make. We fight the globals. We fight the new world order. Secure your DNA force today at InfoWarsLife.com or call toll-free 888-253-3139.